Hello everyone, Trophy Wine Hunter. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a review of two wines from Mass Duray. So this winery was nice enough to send me um, a selection of their wines. I've done a previous video on some of their wines and um, you know, they reached out to me, thought it's a great winery, young winery. They don't have um, a distributor in BC and um, I wanted to support them. And I thought they had some interesting grapes. So um, I agreed to taste them and um, you know, their wines have been really, I know, quite interesting from my perspective. This is gonna be a very interesting tasting because I'm trying two grapes, one called Caladoc, one called Marceline, which are actually um, made by this institute, which is called the National de la Recherche Agronomique or the INRA in France. And both of them were created by this INRA. And so we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, let's talk about the winery first. Um, Master Ray has a long history. Um, it, the property was a Templar order um, temple in the 12th century and it became a winery in 1843. And it was purchased in 2012 by uh, Didier and Kathy Cornel and their daughter, Marion Cornell, now runs the winery. And so um, they're hopefully going to be certified organic this year. So young winemaker, um, they're doing things right. They are in the um, Provence region, and this winery has 110 hectares. They produce a number of different wines, mostly value stuff, but really um, fun and easy drinking and youthful, um, just like Marion. Um, their average age of wines is 30 years and they have uh, sandy soils, which are perfect for growing the Marceline grape, uh, which is the oldest Marceline um, vines in the world. But as I kind of now will tell you, that's not too old because the Marceline grape was only, only created in the 1960s. On their label, it says their um, region is Bouche du Rhone. And this is an IGP title for wines in the southern coast of France. So uh, Bouche du Rhone actually lies in the Provence region, but for various reasons they can't call themselves. They're not in the IOC of Provence. So the sub-region of Bouche du Rhone where the winery is called is called Terre de Comarque and that's in the southwest part of the region. So let's go to the first wine first, which is Caladoc. So Caladoc is um, actually a blend or a production or a cross between um, Grenache and Malbec. So it was created by uh, Paul Trell uh, of the A I N R A in 1958. And a lot of times they don't just do this for fun, but normally they want to create grapes that will grow um, in that region or are more suited towards that region. And so uh, that's generally speaking why they would do this. It is used mostly as a red wine um, grape type, but it can pr produce rosé, which is this is, it's kind of a lighter um, rosé, but it, I would still think it's like almost a salmon colored rosé. Let's taste the wine. And I know this is very shallow of me, but, and I've said the same thing to Alsace producers, uh, but as a wine person, um, this bottle, if you'll notice, this is a little bit um, different. It's a little bit longer than normal Bordeaux or regular bottles. And so um, it's difficult because, like for instance, I put this in the fridge, it won't fit. When you put it in your wine bag or when you put it in your carton of, you know, box of uh, wine, it doesn't fit. When, if you're putting it in your um, wine fridge, it's kind of uh, a, not a standard size. So, um, Kind of that, it's very shallow of me, but that does make a difference sometimes in terms of if it doesn't fit the right way, sometimes oh, I don't want it in my cellar, I don't want it in my bag, I don't want, it's kind of unique and that's not in a good way. So perhaps um, I would suggest maybe working on the uh, uniqueness of the label and maybe go back to a regular bottle. So this is the, um, uh, I've had this open and I had this tasted with friends yesterday and I've just taken it out of the fridge. So it's fairly cold, you can see. So the unique thing about this grape is that uh, it's got elements of both red and white wines. So on the red wine um, perspective, you can, you can smell little plums, but 
you also smell citrusy elements like grapefruit in this. So it's kind of neat and it's almost you get some floral elements, almost some tropical fruits also. So uh, yeah, it's, to me it almost smells a little bit more like a, like a white wine or white wine grape varietal wine that's rosé. Um, so it's kind of neat. And then a little bit of plums at the end of this. Yeah, so on the taste, it is, if you were blinding yourself, you weren't looking at this wine, you might actually think this is a red wine. Um, it's got good acidity with the grapefruit and citrusy elements, but it does have that um, a red plums or black cherry type of taste also. A really good mouth feel in terms of the acidity, the vibrancy, a really nice summer wine. I can see this going very nicely with um, some seafood. Uh, obviously, I'm enjoying it because I'm taking a little bit more taste of it. But it's got some, um, it's almost got some licorice on the end too. Weird, right? But it's got that weight and it's got really, really good sharp acidity almost comparable to a Sauvignon Blanc in terms of the acidity. So I actually quite like this one, 30% alcohol. Um, at, I'm not a big fan of rosés because I don't think they're really that substantial, but I, I really like this wine um, in terms of compared to a lot of rosés that I have. It's got a little bit more depth to it, a little bit more uh, body to it, and really good acidity, uh, which some rosés I find are lacking. Um, so I'm going to give this um, 87 points, almost to 88 points, somewhere between there. Really nice wine to, to drink um, as a summer sipper. Really enjoy it. Well, here are the two wines. I'm not going to look at the corks, but you can see this is again under direct light, so it looks more yellowy. It is kind of a, um, as you can see on the video, it's more like a salmon um, red. Nice simple label, Master Ray, Caladoc, and you'll see it says Tear the Camargue, and then underneath there, I think Pay the Bush the Ruin, 2021. Very simple, clean label. I like that. And then this is the ma the uh, Marcelin. Um, it's got a little dullish red color, um, but that, I think that's just the color of Marcelin. I don't think it's really that aged. Again, simple, um, nice, clean label. I like that. And that's the back of the label. By the way, the vintage on the uh, Caladoc was 2021 and the vintage on the Marcelon is 2018. They are not available in BC liquor stores or in BC at this point. I'm not sure if they're available any place in the world. They are looking for distributors and agents and uh, I think they're a quality winery. Um, value pricing, so uh, you know for uh, the consumer, regular consumers, I think they're great wines to drink. I've uh, reviewed some of the other wines, which I put in the uh, end of this video, and also I used one of their wines, a white wine blend, in their in the Coravin test. So, um, really across the board, I've drank a lot of their wines, and I think they're all pretty good quality. So let's talk about this uh, Marceline because Marceline grape is very uh, interesting to me. It's one of the grapes that's used in um, Chateau Lafitte's. Uh, China wine Long Dai, which um, I also put at the end of this video. And um, it's a really interesting grape for Idol. Um, they use it a lot in China, and uh, it's, I'll kind of explain why. This was another grape type that was uh, created by the INRA, which is the uh, French National Agronomic Research Institute. And this was patented in 1961. It's a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon and Grenache. And so this was created through genetic engineering and it was used, it wanted, they wanted to produce a grape that um, had the best of characteristics of Grenache and Cabernet Sauvignon. And so this was made to be um, done in a kind of more dry soils, which you see kind of in China a lot, these deserts. Um, that uh, in the Nanjing region, that's where um, Silver Heights grows. That, that's why Marcelin is grown there. Um, and then it also is um, a variety that is, um, it works well in um, well-drained thin soils. 
So this is perfect for the Provence region, which is kind of hot and sunny. Um, and it also withstands drought quite well. It's slow ripening. So again, great for a Provence, which has a lot of long, um, you know, hot season, uh, but it also needs good exposure and, uh, to achieve full ripeness. Um, it is not sus as susceptible to mold and uh, insects, which is also a good thing. Uh, I've drank the uh, long dye and uh, to me, Marcelin is, um, has a bit of licorice, which I don't like, but uh, that's just personal preference, but also has a bit of um, earthiness, like almost like soil, um, which I, I actually do don't mind. So it's kind of a drier type, almost clay um, earthiness to it at the aftertaste in my mind. So anyways, again, this has been open for again a day. And so I, I put it in the fridge and now reopened it and now it's back up to in room temperature. So on the smell, it's really hard to describe because it's not, it's distinctively, um, it doesn't smell like Cabernet Sauvignon, definitely. It's got a more floral component to it, like almost like, like um, I, I guess I would say red plums, but it's got a floral component to this. And it's got like an Asian spice component to this like a spiciness to it um, which is very like an exotic um, spice feel to me um, so on the taste it's actually medium body medium tannin so not as heavy as a Cabernet Sauvignon in terms of the tannin a little bit more fruitier up front. Uh, I think it uh, is approachable earlier than Cabernet Sauvignon for sure. It's definitely got a strong licorice aftertaste to this, which is personally not my thing, but in check can be okay. A um, lot of dark fruit, um, very drinkable wine, good acidity. I would say uh, medium, uh, light to medium body. Um, and then medium tannin. So it's a nice drinking wine. It's 14%. It's not a light wine, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of licorice on this. So if you like licorice, you'll love this wine. Um, again, licorice is not my favorite thing, uh, but that again, that's a personal, but definitely you can taste licorice in this wine. Actually good tannin maybe. Good um, tannins are still not heavy, but good. But there's a lot of fruit, a lot of vibrancy, a lot of acidity on this wine. Um, I think it would actually um, be overpowered by a heavy steak, but I think pork would be really nice with this. And I can see how this would be very suitable to the Chinese market. Uh, first of all, the growth of the grape in China, I think would be good. And I, you can see how this would pair well with um, Asian cuisine, which is a little bit lighter in terms of the sauce and the fat content. So I think this would be great. This would, this could be an important grape varietal going forward because of its, um, you know, ability to um, fare better in drier weather. The only problem with this grape, um, it does need a, a really long um, growing season. So again, a perfect market would be China. Desert conditions would be great for Marceline. So I guess if the world becomes like a desert, yeah, this would be a, the overlying uh, grape varietal. Um, but I can see how this may be a good grape to come out um, in terms of uh, with the global warming and the change of the climate, that this could be a useful grape um, in a small portion, which Lafitte has used. Uh, I think 100%, it's a little bit from my perspective, um, too licorice but that little bit of edge at the end, um, that bit of um, uh, vibrancy would be, a, I think, a useful thing to blend. And that's probably why Lafitte's used it in their blend. Again, very nice wine. Um, I'm going to give this, again, 87 points. I think 
if you liked licorice, you would probably give it a higher score, but it's just personally, I'm not into licorice. Um, hope you've enjoyed this tasting and until next time, happy drinking.